in this example, I want to go through the walkthrough for our Lambda Lab. Our Lambda Lab focuses on an existing Python function that's written in Lambda. Um, it's in Python 3.9. Um, so what I want to do is on my desktop, I have that Python function. So if I go to my desktop, I have the, the Lambda function. Um, and then um, the lab is really about resizing an image and creating a thumbnail image um, as an image gets uploaded to an S3 bucket. So that image is this Brewers logo. So I want to walk through that process of, of using an existing function um, to create a Lambda uh, function that then has a trigger based on an S3 bucket action. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a function. So the function name is going to be it's going to be a Python 3.9 function. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and create the function. In addition, the function. I've also gone ahead and went out to S3 and created two buckets. The first one is Brian Dash Witkowski images, and then the second one is Brian Dash Witkowski images dash resized. And the idea here is is that as I upload images to Brian Witkowski images, um, so as I upload the Brewers logo to this bucket, um, what'll happen is my Lambda function will get triggered, and it's meant to create a resized image or a thumbnail image and place that thumbnail image in this resized bucket. Okay, so that's the idea with this function definition. Okay, so um, we have our hello world function, but I actually, I'm, I'm not a Python developer, but I know that I have some existing Python code in that zip file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that zip file. So I'm going to upload from to get my source code and I'm just going to upload that zip file that's sitting on my desktop. So this Lambda function. Okay. okay, and I get a warning in my source code. It tells me that the deployment package is too large to enable inline editing, meaning I can't use the visual editor that's in Lambda but it doesn't mean that my code is not working. So you can see that, however, you can still invoke the function. Um, the function's still just fine, okay? So now, um, in order to, what I wanna do is I'm going to upload the Brewers logo to my images bucket. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload that. So I'll add that file. Okay, so that image is there. And the idea is, is now I want this function to run, but I want it to run on that Brewers logo. So it's Brewers underscore logo um, dash JPEG, I think is the file name. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and test this function out. And I'm going to call this my create thumbnail test. And instead of creating it based on a hello world template, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this based on an S3 put template. Okay, and when I do that, there's a couple of parameters that I have to change in here. Uh, the first one is what's my bucket name? And you'll see my bucket name here, and then also here. So I have to change it in both places. So I, it's, um, if I go back to S3, it's Brian dash Witkowski dash images. So I'll type in Brian dash, dash images. And then I want to repeat that in my ARN, my Amazon resource name. So I'll just copy and paste that. Okay, and then the key is actually the file name of the image that I want to work on. So I called it Brewers, if I can type, underscore logo dash JPEG. Okay, and those are the three things that I have to modify in this test. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and save this test. Okay, so I think it's saved, and now I wanna test it out. Okay, and you'll notice it fails. So it tells me in the execution it fails. If I go over to my code and try to execute my code, I really have to test, so 
Um, if I look at the details, you'll notice that I get an error message. I get a 403 when calling the head ob object operation is forbidden. So what's going on here is now my code that I've uploaded is trying to access my S3 bucket and I'm getting an error message indicating that it's forbidden. Okay, so we already know how to resolve this issue. If I go into the configuration, shooting with a specific, and that role is defined in IAM. So I'm going to go over to this role, and what I need to do is permission access S3. So I'm going to go ahead and add a permission. And just search for S3, uh, and there's a couple. access would allow me to read the file but what's happening is I'm reading the file and then based on that read I'm then trying to create a thumbnail version of it in two separate buckets so just for ease of use I'm going to give full access three okay, so now I've changed the permission for that thumbnail function now I can test it again and just to confirm before I've tested it um, my Brian Dash images has the one Brewers logo file. That's it, and I can tell the size is 42.6. If I go to Brian Witkowski dash images dash resized, it's completely empty. Okay, so now I want to test my file, and now I'll see that it succeeded. I get details about the execution log. Looks good. Life's good there, uh, but if resized and I actually refresh this now you'll see I get this resized Brewers logo and the size is shrunk okay and I'll get different um, I'll get different results in terms of how much the size actually shrinks based on the type of file that I have okay so your results will vary depending on which type of file I actually upload um, but that that's how um, this thumbnail um, create thumbnail functions meant to work. Um, with a test, we're able to test and see that our code is working properly. That looks great. Now I actually want this to work automatically. So anytime I upload an uh, image into that bucket, what I want to happen is I want it to automatically trigger this function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a trigger. Okay, so it's not going to happen as a result of my test event. It's going to happen when the user puts a new image into the original bucket. Okay, so not to the resized bucket, original bucket, Brian Witkowski 